Hello everybody, welcome to the channel again. My name is Aiden. Welcome to IT Skills. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to configure Ubuntu desktop. Last video, we were able to install the Ubuntu desktop into our Nutanix environment. Or in this case, you could do the same thing with any hypervisor. You just need to know how. And uh, you hopefully can go to that video. It will give you an insight what to do. And so what we're going to now need to do is try to configure the Ubuntu desktop. We know we have a couple of applications pre-installed. We want to configure like RDP into the server, maybe using like uh, my fa favorite remote desktop, so, you know, connection manager or remote desktop application or other means, SSH into the server or the desktop. And so we want to just do the remote desktop in this case, and we want to install a couple of application and we want to neutralize the server and see if we can benefit from it. So without further ado, let's get started. This is where my server is at. I'm going to go ahead and actually open uh, the machine already in this tab i already have open i'm gonna connect to it by clicking on the control delete and then i'm gonna supply my credential now what we need to do is we need to actually get a uh, get the ip address of the machine to do the rdp thing so we're gonna go ahead and do if config if config is not found so we need to install the so, you know the install the net tools so let's do that do sudo in fact we're just going to copy this command copy and paste so we're going to do this hit enter we're going to supply the prudential for the admin All right, so there you go. It's installing the, the net tools. It should be done in a bit. Okay, now that we install the net tool, we're gonna do IF config and see. And I'm gonna make a full screen of this so you guys can see it fully. So let's do IF config. That's the same as IP config if you're using Windows. So the IF config is here now. We get a lot of information about the device. And what we're interested in is just the IP address, IPv4 address. That's what we're interested in here is my IPv4 address, 192.168.1.208. So that's what we got. Now I'm going to open my favorite desktop, remote desktop tool. It's called remote desktop connection manager. And here I'm going to hit add a server. And I'm going to type in the IP address, 192.168.1.208. That one, that two oh eight, and I'm gonna call this one. The name is gonna be different. Ubuntu. I'm gonna just put in the actual DNS name. So that's the name, and we're gonna hit add, and we're gonna go ahead add, and we're gonna save this all, save all, and we're gonna go to full screen mode. We're going to try to connect to it. It's tempting to connect to the server or the desktop and see what happens. It's taking a long time and it could not establish the connection. So we're going to need to go ahead and actually go to the properties. And we need to change the credential. The credential we're going to go ahead is going to be I teach skills Yeah, so it's going to go ahead and actually try to save everything. So I'm just going to keep it hit okay for now. We're missing a step now, so let's go ahead and fix that step. So we're going to need to install another tool to make this work for us. So we're going to go ahead and do control C. So we're going to search for install XRDP and we're going to find a lot of articles talking about it. So we're going to click on this one 
So we're just going to copy this command and paste it. But the only challenge we have is we can just copy any paste and any command or can we hold on. Let's go to the terminal. Paste. Let's put in our credential. Looks like it's finished doing that. Let's go back to our Firefox. This is to get the status, so let's get the status. So it's active and running. So now I'm adding that command. I had to run that command because looking at a lot of research, it says that that command doesn't come with a regular install. So I had to go ahead and run this command basically to see if that will resolve the issue we're getting. And again, right now we're not concerned with security. We're wanting to get this to work. So if you are basically working for enterprise, I'm just making a disclaimer. You probably want to research exactly how this running any of this command will impact your environment. But in this case, it's a demo environment, so we're going to go back and try to connect to our machine. We're getting this right now. We're going to cancel. We're going to double-click and then see what happens. We get this before. It's no problem. We're going to hit yes. And still getting the same thing. It says here, connection, okay. Before, we were getting a failure, but now we're getting okay. But we still need to get sending login info to the session manager. Please wait. Login failed display. Let's try to do this if I can log in now. Same thing. Let's try VNC option. So I fixed the issue by creating another user. Apparently, Linux, I know this, but I did not do it right. My username eventually was created with the wrong, you know, long, wrong, wrong username, basically. I had an uppercase T I T, and so that needed to be changed, and I did not change it. Instead of I just uh, I created another account with Aiden like that, and it worked fine. So if I go ahead and actually rename this to lowercase t, I teach skills in IT like that. It should also work. So once you do that, it should get you up to, to where you can actually, you know, do what you need to do. So it's it wasn't easy, straightforward, because I was looking around for people that may be having issues and stuff like that. But the username format definitely did it for me. And now I'm logged in here. Let's come over here. This is the new user account and uh, there's a lot of previews i don't like the resolution though over here so let me see if i can fix the resolution type resolution is a little bit wacky but it's a lot better using on the desktop than anywhere else there you go it says an update has been issued for this ubuntu desktop i'm gonna hit install And so, and it's going to want me to put in my credential again. And I'm installing it right now. So, yeah. So, 
what we learned here is that by running the commands we did run we can do it but we just need to make sure that sometimes we don't have the simplest issue which is our username or password error in this case we had a username mismatch so the username did not conform to linux you know methods if you will so but we fixed that so there you go the name's changed now i have no doubt if i change this to my other you know my other account or try to log in with this account again it will work again so let's come over here go to the properties go over here to the login and if i put in i teach skills with the lowercase and then hit ok and then reconnect again hit yes it should also work obviously make sure that my password is correct I'm already connected to another user, so that could be another problem for me. Yeah, I think uh, having connected to another account would be a problematic. So let's see over here if I can actually log out or see here. Don't send. Let me actually log out out of here. log out i just logged out so now let's try this again and i'm gonna say yes it's trying it hasn't failed yet usually when it takes this long it should work usually in the linux world in Windows world, when it takes so so long, it probably was not gonna work. We gotta be patient, so there you go. That is all we had to do. We logged. Okay, so we are good now. So this is the ideal screen we wanted to get, and we are got it so we needed we were now we were it was operating on a user error before so right now it's good so we can actually go to the start menu this is all the nice pretty start menu and then we can actually click on the help office the open office the turner bird mail etc so there's a lot we could do over here but Right now we got software update, software updater. What is the snap store? Browse software. Let's see, this is where we could probably get a softwares maybe. So we got an office. So there's a lot of stuff. OBS, Teams for Linux. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of testing we can do with this. Uh, there's so much that's available right now. Uh, let's check it like education because we like to learn. It's still loading here. Maybe it's not really populated with anything yet. Uh, so let's see. Let's go back here. Uh, let's check about entertainment because people do like their entertainment. And I don't see anything here loaded yet. It could be just, it just needs to be probably be waiting. It did say that it needs to be updating on that. So let's come over here, updates. Let's see if we can update, like Firefox needs update. So there's a lot of things. So let's hit update all. Let's put in our credential. So yeah, we we did achieve what we wanted to do in this video. We were able to enable RDP and so we can interact with our Linux machine just like Windows because I'm using this on a nice 
hypervisor, but I cannot sit next to the hypervisor or use it on a web UI where I cannot do control copy and paste. So that's why I did this. I wanted to get access to this. Now I have access to this. I'll use more of Linux because it's fun. It's a lot. It has a lot of capabilities. So we'll be able to try a lot of things in here. I know that there's going to be some application that you cannot run, but for now, our machine is ready. It's ready to be, you know, interested. So uh, I guess what I could probably try to do is this thing requires authentication again. Hold on. So it probably will need to be rebooted. What else can we do here? We got the app store type of thing. It still wants more updates. So let's see. So for RB software update, we need to put in our credential. Let's go back to the update section. So yeah, it's got one more update left. So every update needs a credential basically. So Yeah, this is annoying though, putting credential every minute. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop for now. We're gonna do this those later. Okay, let's come over here to activities. Oops. So what else we got here? We got couple things we could do over here document scanner file manager settings yeah so it's exciting it is very exciting and with this much we could do about it but yeah so stay tuned for more video on what else we could do with linux desktop especially the ubuntu So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something. I definitely did learn something. And now we can utilize the powerful Linux, you know, distros and enable remote desktop and utilize it, interact it just like we do with Windows servers, clients, etc. And so yeah, I'm going to be trying other things with this Linux, maybe trying Teams call and see how it is, trying Office, trying other things that normally you would use in windows without thinking about it but within the linux world it might be performing you know you might have to think about it but i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give us a thumbs up like subscribe if you haven't already we'll talk to you next time peace download the